Here are seven common patching mistakes that you can make with the Synthesizer.com modular synthesizer. In this small Box 11 setup, I have a MIDI interface, multiples, an oscillator, mixer, a filter, an envelope generator, and an amplifier. Now we're going to start out here with a simple patch that will start with our MIDI interface. This is our MIDI stream from our keyboard. And we're going to take the pitch out and that's going to go to a multiple. We're going to use the top group of the multiple here and we're going to make sure it's not connected. And this output is going to go to the one volt per octave on our oscillator. The output of our oscillator, we're going to use the pulse and we're going to go into a filter. Now we're going to take our gate output from our MIDI interface and that's going to go into the other group of the multiple right below that. And that gate is going to go over here, it's the blue cable, to our gate in our envelope generator. Now the output from the filter is going to go to a VCA, that controls our amplitude. And we're going to take the output voltage control from our envelope generator, it's going to control our amplifier. So this is a pretty simple patch. Now we're going to take our sound system and it'll go to our output. Okay, let's start with number one. The Q174 MIDI interface can have a Q175 MIDI aid to it, and it has an arpeggiator. And that arpeggiator can accidentally be turned on. And when it's turned on and the speed is up, you'll get something like this. And the solution is to simply turn the arpeggiator off. Now, if the speed was slower on the arpeggiator, you might recognize what's happening. But if it's real fast, it'll sound like this. So that's number one. The arpeggiator can be accidentally turned on. Now number two. This is the Q124 multiples, and if you'll notice here, it has a connect switch that connects the top group with the middle group. Now let's say you use the top group for pitch, and you use the middle group for gate, like I've done here. If you accidentally have this switch set to connect, you will get some... Sometimes you'll get notes, sometimes you won't, because the gate is attached to the pitch. So the solution is to turn the connect off so that you're not shorting the pitch and the gate. Okay, number three, the Q106 oscillator has a pulse width output that I'm using here. And you can hear the pulse width changing. Now sometimes this pulse width is set all the way to zero. And you might get absolutely nothing or all the way to 100%. Everything looks right, but the only ch problem is this width. So that can cause some surprises too. Now let's switch over and let's use the Q167 LFO++ as an audio oscillator. And we'll do that by plugging the pitch into the one volt per octave input. And we'll use the output here. And we'll turn up the amplitude. We'll pick a waveform like the square. Now that works just fine. But this input here has an attenuator. And if it's not set to full clockwise, which is the one volt per octave setting, if it's halfway or some other position, then you'll get uh, tracking that is not one volt per octave. So if you want it to track the keyboard, make sure that the one volt per octave knob is turned all the way up full clockwise. Okay, number five. The Q107 filter has uh, several knobs that can change the frequency and the input mix. Now a couple of things can happen here. This input mix can be turned all the way to zero. And even though your patch looks great, uh, you're going to get nothing out. So that level has to be turned up. And the same with the frequency. If you have the frequency turned all the way down, you're in low pass mode, you'll get nothing. So 
So make sure your frequency is in a range that is useful and that your signal input mixer is turned up and it's not stuck at zero. Okay, patching mistake number six is with the Q108 amplifier, you have control both manually and with voltage control over the amplitude of the signal. And the gain knob here is added to whatever the voltage control input is. So if you have the gain knob set up, then you're going to get an output all the time, whether you have an envelope turning this on or not. Also, if you have the control input turned all the way down, that means that zero amount of this control voltage is getting in here and you'll get no output. This becomes your volume control and you need to turn that up so that the control voltage can control the amplitude. And the gain needs to be turned to zero in almost all cases, unless you want it on all the time. Okay, patching mistake number seven is an envelope generator can be fast or slow. And if it's very fast, you can end up with clicks. And we're going to turn this one very fast. The Q179 is very fast. And if you hear that click on the front end, that's because our attack is set fast. But you can also get that click uh, with the decay and the release. Here's a very fast decay. So even though the attack is slow, you're getting a very fast decay that creates a click. So just turn that up a little bit. Same with release. I'm going to turn the release down to zero so it's very fast. Hear the click on the end. So we want to turn that up. Now sometimes you want that very fast attack or release. And sometimes you don't. So you have control over it. And that's how you solve that. Enjoy.